Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we will go ahead and get started. Just briefly, I'm Lindsay Scott. I think I know a lot of the people on the call today. I'm the regional sales manager uh, out of the Northern Ohio Territory for Kendall at Home. And I am thrilled and excited to have with us Norm Dietrich, uh, also Kendall at Home member. Uh, and Norm, I'm going to let you take it from here. Norm has is joining us fresh off of a jet setting trip over to Italy and he rode his bike over there and we're pretty excited to hear about your your trip the good the bad and everything in between Norm so with that I'm going to step aside I do want to let the group know Norm is happy to take some questions if you just type them in the chat or the q and I'm thinking by now most of us have done a lot of zooms but they're usually in the bottom tray I'll be keeping an eye on them. And I, if I think it's appropriate to, to hop in and ask you in the moment, Norm, I'll put my camera on and do that. If not, we'll maybe talk about them at the end of your presentation. So with that, Norm, take it away. And thanks again for your time today. Okay. Bona sera, or good afternoon to those of you who are live and whatever other time slot you might happen to be if you are watching it on the replay. Uh, my name is Norm Dietrich. I recently traveled to Italy with a group of 16 friends who are members of my bike club, uh, Silver Wheels, which is based out of the Oberlin and Illyria area. Uh, we'll go through, we flew to Florence, spent a couple of days in Florence, then rode six days and spent a couple of days in Rome on the back end. Uh, what I'm going to show is some pictures that were taken during that period of time. Uh, the first picture you see is actually uh, looking at mountains going between Zurich and Florence, because that was the routing I was on going in. Uh, next shot is coming into Florence. And from here, uh, the first two and a half days, basically, we walked around either on formal tours in museums or uh, just directly walking around. This is the Point Vecchio Bridge over the Arno River. Uh, there's a second shot of it from a distance. This particular bridge has shops in it. Originally, it was things like butchers and blacksmith. Today, it's primarily people selling gold jewelry. Uh, I don't have any pictures from the inside. I, I wasn't taking pictures in the middle of crowded traffic. Uh, another picture of the river looking the other way. And up top here is the uh, Piazza Michelangelo, which we'll see a little bit later on. This first museum we went in was the Galileo Science Museum. This is the armillary sphere. It was done by Antonio Sanducci in the 1588 to 1593 time frame. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I think it is supposed to represent various uh, things in terms of the orbits and time. I say, I don't know exactly. I probably should have looked it up, but I didn't. This is the only thing that I got from that museum. Uh, there were a number of areas, things that Galileo had developed like thermometers and some other stuff. Uh, this is just the, the Petty Castle or, and behind it, there are a number of large gardens now we are in the Uffizi Museum. This museum is a very large, and you'll get a perspective in a couple of minutes, art museum, primarily Renaissance art. Uh, and this is one example. Uh, this is a piece that would probably have been behind an altar originally. This is one section of the ceiling on one hall. The next shot is looking down that hall. Now this hall, this particular one was empty. Uh, I've got another one a little bit later on, 
Okay. This is a particular piece of work. It's done on wood and it's uh, the Madonna. Madonna. This is the piece. Okay, this is a scan of a, I believe it was a tribunal room, place where a lot of meetings were held, important decisions were made. Uh, they had just finished refurbishing it. They weren't letting anybody in, so this was shot through one of the side doors. This is looking down from the front toward the back of the Ephesi. This tower is at the Plaza Vecchio, which and this particular building is the seat of government for Florence. This building runs on both sides here. The next shot We'll be looking the other direction, and the picture was probably taken from either this window or this, the prior picture taken from one of those two windows. I mentioned earlier the, the Michelangelo Plaza and Overlook of Florence, and this is where we're heading right now. This is the Church of uh san mateo el monte basically on the mount and now this picture is but looking back out over florence uh this is the building that is referred to as a doma and we'll be seeing some more things about this a little bit later on a little closer up so you don't quite get the perspective of how big it is This is just a still shot looking out over Florence. And the next thing is going to be a scan. Just looking around. OK, this is uh, let's see. Adoration of the Shepherds, it's a 1482, 1485 was when it was done. It's a side altar in a church. I don't remember what church, but it was in Venice. Now, we talked about the Cathedral of uh, Santa Maria dei Fiori, otherwise known as the Domo. And if you'll excuse me, I'm probably gonna butcher some of these names. Uh, that's the big dome that I showed you before. And these are the main doors. These doors are not the originals. The originals have been moved to a museum and this is a copy. Another shot from the side. This is the main the, the main dome. And that is, I believe, the largest unsupported dome out of the time that it was built. This shot is a piece from the front of the administration building. What you see here is a copy of Mike, Michelangelo's David. And the next thing you're going to see is some work that Michelangelo did. There are going to be a couple of partial works here that were work that he did basically after the David, working on individual pieces, and then he just you know, part of the body, and then he stopped. Now, here is the original David. And I was looking at some stuff earlier, and basically he was not the first one who was starting to do this work. The original start on this piece of, of marble was probably 20 or 30 years before, and some other people had started the work and hadn't, hadn't gotten very far. Eventually, the commission to do this was offered, 
And he did this at the age of 26. So I'm gonna give you three more shots from three different views. That's the front on one side, the other side of the back and the other side. This, these were in the Academia Museum. There is additional artwork by Michelangelo there. And there's also a section in that museum of musical instruments of the time of the period. When we Norm, we have our, our first question. Okay. At this time when you were in Florence, were you biking yet, or this was a little sightseeing before the trek starts? We did three days of sightseeing before we started riding. Excellent. Okay. So you're you're just getting ready. Yeah. And actually, this is this is basically the last picture of the time in Florence. Excellent. And one other question: were the partial Davids at this museum? with the complete one or they're somewhere else so those this is the full david the other pictures that you saw are the these pieces are at that museum there's there's probably eight or ten more pieces of work that he had done partials not for david these were really done after the david okay Excellent. All right, I will let you continue now. Okay, now we transitioned by bus from, from Florence to the area where we're gonna start riding. And I'll show you that in a minute. The place where we were staying for the first two nights was a winery. And as it was there before we had dinner that night. The owner of the winery gave us a talk about wines and we got an opportunity to, sam to sample two, actually two reds and two whites. Now, what, what I should say is I mentioned that my bike group went. There were, originally there were 18 of us. One couple got COVID the week before we were gonna go. So we ended up with 16 but we all knew each other, which is unusual for these tours that the tour operators were not used to having a group come in that knew everybody. And let me back up one second here. These two gentlemen were our guides. These are the backs of a couple of, a couple of our members. This is a view from the hotel that we were staying at. Now we're gonna start riding. The ride this day, and I'm gonna drop back a second here onto another screen. This list is a summary basically of the rides that we did and how long they were. But what I'm going back here for is this picture which shows the route and the, the terrain. And then this, the thin line is the elevations with the scale over here indicating how steep it was in certain spots. There were a couple of places where we got over 10%. The other thing I wanna show is where we were. So I'm gonna back this out And let me see here. Okay. Ferenz is what they call Florence. So this is Florence. We're down here. We're going to end up down here. And let me bring it back just a little bit further. And let's see. And Rome is here. So we've got Florence, our riding area here, and then Rome. So that's the, the nature of what we'll be doing on this trip.
the for the ride We used an application which most people were running on their phones called Ride with GPS. That basically would give us turn by turn instructions on how to do the route. Uh, in my case, I had loaded those, that information onto my bike computer. And so I was watching where I was going. I had a graphical representation as well as directions on when to make a turn. Uh, that summary list I showed you before was from the application associated with my bike computer. So those were my actual distances and elevations. Let's go back to pictures. This was the lunch break for the first ride, which was, well, actually the second ride. The first day we rode Technically, we we're supposed to ride eight miles. It was basically for bike fitting to make sure that the bikes fit and worked. Uh, a number of us brought our own pedals, so they had to put the pedals on and we had to make sure that was right. And in my case, I had to put the bike computer on and the, and the sensors so that I would know where I was going and you know how fast I was going. And in my case, I also like to know the cadence or how fast I'm, I'm turning the pedals. I try and stay in a particular range when I'm doing that. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, Casel Maritimo. Uh, it is the end of, it was lunchtime after that ride that I showed you. You can see how steep some of these walkways are in here in the town and a few that's out toward the Mediterranean or the Sea of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Korea or something to that effect. The church uh, of Saint Saint Andrea and a chapel in the church, the altar. After lunch we rode toward back toward our hotel along a different route. The part of the route was through basically an arch of trees over a basically pine, pine needles. And this is a mile, mile and a half. This extended onto a trail, which then went along the coast and then into sand, which got us all off our bikes because we're sure not going to do road bikes on that kind of terrain. It's a it's asking for trouble. And that is what the outside of the winery looked like on the side toward the ocean or toward the toward the sea. Another view off the, off a uh, off the front side there. This is the support vehicle that provided the, the tour was run by VBT, uh, Vermont Bike Tours. This is a trailer they use to bring the bikes in. And then these are the two guys who are our guides. Uh, the yellow bikes like this are e-bikes. That is to say there's a motor assist on them. Uh, you have to pedal. They won't, they won't assist you if you're not pedaling, but you don't have to do all the work. And six of our 16 people had e-bikes. Uh, we were evenly divided men and women. Uh, only one of the guys was riding an e-bike and he and his wife were riding them together. They said they wanted to be able to take it easy and do the sightseeing while they were riding instead of not having, you know, so they didn't have to concentrate exactly on pedaling hard. Uh, but the other women uh, were riding on what the guides referred to as muscle bikes. This was a lunch or a rest stop along the tour. Again, this is an e-bike. Uh, the motor is actually down in here behind the behind the crank, so it's assisting the it's assisting the crank. This is a oh Norm, I'm sorry, I didn't unmute myself. 
just just briefly, what is a what is a muscle bike? And kind of along those lines, what a is it like muscle. to ride a bike that's not yours? A, I mean, is that okay? Let a muscle bike is a normal bike where it's muscle power rather than electric power. Okay. It's called the muscle bikes to differentiate from the electric bikes. Makes perfect sense. And in terms of riding bikes that weren't our own, they asked us for our how tall we were before we got there. So they get they would have bikes of an appropriate size, which they were able to do for all but one person. One of the ladies that rides an e-bike is under five feet tall. And the problem with the e-bike, and let me back up to it, is if you see in here, the battery is here. And that gets this bar up a ways. She basically had to tip the bike in order to be able to get on it because her, her crotch height was shorter than that. Okay. So, but they didn't so have any... They didn't have any e-bikes that were at least in the group that we had that were shorter. Excellent, thank you. Now, the bikes we had, the the quote unquote muscle bikes, were Fuji uh, carbon bike, carbon fiber bike, road bikes, uh, eleven speed with. Uh, I think an 1134, so 11 on the smallest gear in the back, which is what you use at the on the high end when you're going fast, and 34 on the largest gear on the back, which is which is where you're going when you're when you're climbing the hill, and then a a, a two speed front ring. So we had a we had a lot of help when we on the hills in terms of the gearing. Uh, they had recommended that anybody that brought their own bike had at least a 32 for their big gear in the back for climbing. And actually, that's what I have in mind at home. Uh, okay, we are now, let's see, this is the next day, um, 24. Let's make sure I got the right day here when I'm talking about it. Um, we're going to, this is a transition day, so we are riding from the winery to our first to our next hotel. Uh, this is the stop at lunchtime, and there's a little church here, Saint Saint uh, Giacomo e Cristoforo. Again, I'm probably butchering this pronunciation picture inside and that was in let me read this here um, um Bogle, Bolga Harry B O L G H E R I so now after lunch we're heading toward the hotel down what they refer to as the wine road. Uh, there are a lot of wineries on it and potentially opportunities for wine tasting, although most of them didn't appear to be open when we went by. Uh, this was this was on Saturday. We are now in another treat area again with the pine needles down. We're now at the hotel looking out at the water. This is some artwork that was around it. There was more artwork inside. This is basically glass. Uh, no one explained the purpose. Uh, one person referred to these as fairies. I don't know. On the next day's ride, we stopped at this location. This is a winery, but it's also a residential place, a school, and a church, all to support the people that are working there and 
in the general vicinity. This was on Sunday and mass had just finished up when we were there. That was in the middle of the ride. We, at lunchtime, we were heading to a olive, olive vineyard and an olive oil production facility, which is where we are here. Uh, it was a steep gravel road, so people were either leaving their bikes down at the bottom and walking or pushing their bikes up. We didn't ride up this one. It's just asking for trouble. And you can see some olive trees. And again, we're looking out toward the water. Some more olive trees. Again, our guides. And this is the gentleman that owns the vineyard or the, the orchard really, I guess you could call. And that little cup is a sampling cup because we sampled their olive oil, which was very good, and then had a lunch uh, where, of course, olive oil was one of the things that we were supposed to put on our food. And this is where it was. Back to our hotel, this is looking out over the water. Two ways. And then a sunset. And then the next day's ride. Okay, so that is the 20, that is the 26th. Just checking my notes, make sure I get everything in the right order here. Okay, we're in the process now of riding to the next hotel. Uh, we're, we're going to change hotels again, and we're riding up through toward Saseta, where we will stop. That's a view, and just some of the facilities on the countryside, and most of these are probably 1500 or later, you know, that kind of time frame when they were built. Again, you can see the stone stonework for the walkways or driveways. Uh, there's a church over here on the side. And basically the way, you know, the, the carbon bikes do not have kickstands on them. So you basically have to lean them against something unless you want to lay them down and that's not exactly what we like to do. But we're stopped here for lunch. Was it too early for olive harvest? Uh, they had done some harvesting and they were going to do some more. Uh, there were, I have some pictures which I don't have here. They're showing some trees where they, you know, some of the olives were green and some were black. When they go black is when they start harvesting them. Thank you. The green olives that you buy to eat as olives uh, are not the same variety as the ones that they're going to be using for olive oil. Okay. Uh, after we got into our hotel, in the evening, they shuttled us into town. And let me get the name of the town. Uh, T-I-O-M-B-I-N-O. Payombo or something to that effect. And what we're seeing here, that's the Isle of Elbe where Napoleon was kept for part of the time he was in captivity. I believe that they said that he had escaped from there and ended up someplace else later after they recaptured him. And that's looking out over part of the town and part of a little harbor that's in the town. At our hotel, 
This is a hot water spring fed pool, about 3000 square meters. Uh, this pool had been there for a long time. The hotel facility around it and all of the extra stuff is more recent. Uh, our guides who were in their in their 60s indicated that they'd probably been out there with their families when they were kids. So, so the, the pool had been available. Off to this side and in the building, they had some rooms with a sauna and hot tub and some hot water with a bunch of different places where you could get jets to pour down on you or, or hit you in, in various parts of your anatomy, depending upon which way you positioned yourself. Uh, didn't take a camera in there. I wasn't going to take a chance on killing my phone. Besides, I don't, I mean, okay, now this is the 20, 27th, which is our last day of riding. And this is starting out on the ride. I'm going to drop back to the other view here and bring up the contour for this ride. There is a real steep climb on the front end. The grade gets real steep right up here at the top edge. And so it's It was a workout. Uh, I'm going to expand out again to show you where we were relative Here's Florence again, and let's see. I think Rome is still a little bit further down. Yeah, there's Rome. When we took the pictures the prior night, I'm going to go back in. We were down here. And that's that's the Isle of Elbe. This was part way up the hill. Most of us took a break there. Primarily to take, well, to take pictures and to take a break. And then this is actually coming down. This is on the back side of the hill. This castle is up near the top there. Okay, this area uh, is mining. Um, this is basically sandstone. This is marble, but it's not the decorative marble that you would you would see on a on a church or on a building. Uh, that comes from a different area. Now we're riding into. Let's see. Uh, This is Baretti, B-A-R-A-T-T-I, that we're heading into, and this is along the coast. And you'll get a few more coastal views on the way out. Uh, we stopped at this restaurant and a few views from the restaurant, and then had a shuttle ride to Papalonia, which is a, well, I'll show you. The castle, this was originally the watchtower was built around 1500. The rest of it was put in around 1700. There's a description and stuff there. I know that it's probably going to be difficult for anybody to read it. But that's sort of the layout of the facility. 
uh, down the main drag. A lot of merchants, you know, trying to sell stuff. You know, I think that's their main livelihood is tourists coming through. Norm, someone has a question about um, the, the quality of your photos. Are, it's just really amazing and the color is beautiful. Are these all from your phone or do you, did you have a camera with you as well, a separate these, camera? These are all from my phone. It's a Samsung uh, S20 FE 5G. They're beautiful. Norm, as you flip these pictures, if, if you feel like there is a time to talk a little bit. Will you share with the group a little bit about how long you've been writing and, and how old you were when you got into writing? Okay. Think a little bit of your journey to get where you are now. All righty. Well, uh, I started writing, I mean, I started writing as a kid because I had a plain dealer route, but uh, I didn't do any serious writing. This kind of writing, I started in 13 after my wife passed. Uh, I did that. For a couple of reasons. One, did not want to become a couch potato. Number two, I'm a skier and I felt that this was a good way to keep my legs in some sort of shape come ski season. Uh, as a skier, you know, I've been skiing since 1964. Uh, I'm on the ski patrol out at Brandywine. This will be my 48th season on the patrol. But so when I started riding, Turns out a neighbor across from the street belonged to Silver Wheels. And I did a few rides with him and then joined the club. And I've been riding with them ever since. Uh, actually, last four seasons, I think I, last three seasons, uh, four seasons, I think I've been high mileage for the guys. But uh, so uh, I ride a bit. I am 80 at this point. And right now I have for this year, about 4,300 miles of riding uh, on between this trip and other trips. Uh, in terms of trips this year, there's a ride called Goba Great Ohio Bike Adventure that's run out of a group by a group out of Columbus uh, called uh, Columbus Outdoor Pursuits. They put circle rides at various places around the state each year. Uh, starting on Father's Day for a week. It's intended to be a camping trip. Uh, my level of camping is motels, but, uh, and I will, I pack in a backpack so that I can get on my bike and, and ride to the motel once, once we get to the camp, to the campsites. Uh, the other thing is earlier this year, uh, about two months ago, we did a ride up in Wisconsin, Northern Wisconsin uh, for a week. Both Goba and the Wisconsin ride, we did about 400 miles in the week. This is more around that watchtower. i just give you an idea what it can see. It was basically watching the water there. Now we're heading back out of town. This is the appetizer for our final dinner with the tour group. Uh, this is octopus, this is salmon. I'm not quite sure what this was. There was some salmon, I believe there was some salmon in it. I think there may have been some tuna in this one. And then we had an option of fish or vegetarian or, or beef. I had the fish, but, and it was good. Now we're in Rome. Uh, we took a bus, another, two hours, two and a half hours to Rome. These are the Spanish steps. We'll get up a little closer here. And a look out from the Spanish steps. And then there's a church here that's up at the top. Now, this is a Tivoli fountain and a couple more views. Excuse the finger over there. That's uh, one handicap I have in the, the lens in the, on the corner of the camera instead of in the middle. Okay, this is a 
Church of St. Ignatius Loyola, and it was a very ornate church. Okay, the, this was a part, when we got into Rome, um, we went walking. Uh, we had time to kill. We did not have any formal tours planned. So uh, this is now the Pantheon. Uh, and see the roof up there. This, between this and the Domo, I think you had the two, this, I forget which one was done first, the largest unsupported domes. Now this is now a church. I'm not quite sure what it was originally. Uh, this is a more of a, a panoramic view around it to sort of get an idea what the whole thing looked like. And then this is a few of the side altars. Uh, these are tombs. Uh, people that had a lot of money um, bought a chunk of real estate in the floor and Typically, there was an altar associated with them, so they paid for that, and then they went in there. Again, another another panoramic. Uh, this is Raphael's grave, and it had been moved in there. A little better picture showing the whole thing, and that was that was the uh, pantheon. Next day, this is the first of our formal tours in Rome. Uh, we're going to do the Sistine Chapel and the St. Peter's Basilica. In the chapel, well, the museums of Sistine Chapel. There are no pictures from the chapel. We're not, we were not allowed to do any picture taking in the chapel. But this is a model of basically the Vatican, the Vatican State. I mean, it, that's that's it. That's the Vatican, but it's a country. These are pictures that. Let's see if I can move this around a little bit. I can't. These are pictures of stuff that is in the Sistine Chapel. So you get a general idea of what's there. This is part of the ceiling and where are we here? Uh, this was, well, the last judgment, which was part of the Sistine Chapel. And some of the museum spaces A view from the Vatican, some of the area around it. This is a mosaic, which is very, very tiny tiles. Some more views. This is all a ceiling in the room where the, those views you just saw, this is on the ceiling in that room. This is a piece of artwork. And another dome in the in the museum area. That bowl is underneath the dome. And that's a very big bowl. And this is all mosaic. This again is mosaic. You can see the detail down in there. You see all the cracks from the tile.
to see you in peace. Out the window or one of the windows in the museum. Norm, I have to ask that that sky looks a little ominous. Were you all caught, not necessarily even just right here, but on your, your biking trip? Did you have any inclement weather to deal with? And how'd you deal with that? <laughs> the weatherman was about as good as he is around here. We had a lot of days when they were predicting the night before it was predicting all rain. The next morning there was a spike predicted at about 11 or 12 o'clock. The only time we had any rain was on the last day we were in Rome and we were walking through the forum going through that area and it started to rain. We ducked into a museum for 15 minutes, came out, the rain was gone. That oh, was wow. You all got pretty lucky. That's we great. Very, we got very lucky and the temperatures while we were riding were in the, in the low 70s, which is perfect. Fantastic. Okay. This is a picture looking up at the at the basilica or at the at St. Peter's. Uh, this is the window I believe where the Pope occasionally talks from. There's another spot too, but that's one of them. This is looking the other direction. So you can see there's a lot of seats around there outside. This door is opened at the beginning of a of a special year to start the year up on the inside when it's not going to be open it's walled in it's walled over now we're inside the i'm going to drill down a little bit here if we can read them The lettering up here, I believe is 11 feet tall. Just to give you an idea, that's about 250 feet up there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Be right back. Hit the wrong button. And you can see there were a lot of people in there. Uh, there are a number of chapels along the side. That's one of the popes, I forget which one, a more recent one. When they opened his grave up, his body was un or had not decomposed. I believe there's a wax covering on his face at this point, but other than that, the body is as it was. That's the dome above the altar. That is not glass. It's a type of stone which is which is translucent, but I forget exactly what it was. But those, those rays are not glass. These are all inside the basilica. There's a Swiss guard who basically guard the Vatican. This is the Casa San Angelo, which is outside of the Basilica area. Uh, according to some people, there is a tunnel from the Basilica area into there. So in the event of the emergency, the Pope could get out. Okay, that was the, that was one tour. The second tour we did was over into the Jewish ghetto and, and some of the underground stuff that has been dug out since then and some other places associated with that. 
This is just some of the old, old areas. Okay, this is the Church of St. Cecilia. Uh, she was martyred along with her husband and brother-in-law. Let me drill in on this just so you can see up a little closer. And inside. She was found when she was when she was well when her brother and her husband and brother-in-law were killed they tried to decapitate her she lived three days this is how her body was found there's actually a little scar on here this is the original of this piece of artwork the, the statue there is a larger copy of it in a in a catacomb which i went to see on friday afternoon i don't have any pictures from there but that's where the body was originally found and then it was moved here so the body is is here but that's not it that's what it looked like when they found her this is underneath the church. Okay, that's the end of that area. This is heading to the next tour. This is basically Italy's monument for the for their unknown soldier. And I'll drill in here. There's a couple of torches and two soldiers, sailors that are guarding it. This is on the side of the forum area toward town. So when we're down in the forum, we're going to be look, we'll see a little bit of the backside of this, but that's not where we're going next. The next step is we're heading toward the Colosseum. And this is sort of a layout of the forum here. Colosseum, as you can see, there are parts of it missing. You can maybe see a little bit of scaffolding. We'll see a whole lot more in a minute. Some of the entrances. Okay, this piece of ceiling has been cleaned up. So you can see what it looked like the whole thing looked like that at one point in time and, you know in here that would have this stuff over here would have looked more like this this is the gladiators gate it was the gate the gladiators went in through and most you know unlike what you get in most movie depictions most most of the battles were not to the death uh, there were gladiators who were not slaves. Uh, there were a number of them who were, but the gladiators did not live in the Colosseum. They had other facilities for them. Okay, this is down on the floor level of the Colosseum. They've got a partial floor in here now. So you can see, get down there and you can see the rest of it. This area up here has scaffolding on it, not because they're working on it, but because they're working on putting another subway in, and this is to support it because the vibrations were giving it grief.
This area here is where the leadership typically would have been sitting up in here. And then it, as it goes up, you had the more influential people, then the, then the common men, and then the common women were all the way up at the top. This is more of a panoramic view from that thing to sort of get an idea what it looked like. And that's a closer view of just that, that particular seating area. And you can see there's a lot of a lot of structure here. A lot of arches. Looking down into the floor, there were a lot of rooms down there that primarily were used to house animals because a lot of the events that they had were contests between men and animals. This is an example. There were a number of trap doors with elevators underneath or under them that were used when they were ready to have an animal or people come up onto the onto the floor to participate in their their battle or whatever. The door would drop down and the elevator would let whether it was an animal or people up onto the floor. So people didn't know exactly where things were going to happen. There were a lot of these, at least a dozen of these around the floor. Norm, I, I'm going to chime in here. Um, and, and while I do, I just want to say to our guests, we're, we're getting there. But if, if anybody has a, a question or if, if they want to try to connect with Norm about, um, about biking and maybe you're in a club and uh, shoot us a, a message in the chat, but I, so now would be the time if anybody has something they really want to know. Uh, Norm, I, I had the, the pleasure of years ago going to Rome and to me, the Colosseum was just, it is such a fascinating place to be because you can watch all these movies. And when you're there, you have to remind yourself that you're not on some kind of set when you see these trap doors and right that these things really happened it's such a strange feeling to think about the feet that stood yep. where you are yeah and this picture here just shows what the coliseum probably looked like when it was when it was all there instead of what we're seeing now with big holes in it anybody got any questions so amazing Okay, this is the, let's see, Arch of Constantine. And underneath the arch, this image here is showing troops bringing a golden menorah that they had uh, scavenged and we're bringing home to uh, probably to melt down. And then I'm just gonna quickly scan through these. These are pictures of the area of the forum. Yeah, those little statues back there were what was on the front of that Tomb of the Unknowns. And then this is a layout of the whole area. And that's the show. That's everything I have for you. Norm. That was amazing. Someone did chime in and asked, and, and I don't know, I'm sure it's a little bit different on every phone, but someone was asking about those 
panorama pictures. Um, you know, I, I know on, on my iPhone, it's, it's a pretty simple setting. I just slide over. Um, was that pretty simple or do you have an added app on your phone no, or something? It's in the phone, but the normal display doesn't show it there on the, on the right hand edge where it says where you've got photo or movie or, or video or that. It says more. When you go into more, it brings up the screen with a whole bunch of settings. And the upper left-hand corner is panorama. They were really beautiful. You you got some amazing scenery. It's um. It is. It's amazing to kind of see how this journey of biking. Why and when you started and 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 where you've gone with this. Uh, not many people, if someone said to me, hey, want to go bike in Italy? I would say, oh my gosh, I could never, would never. And I just love the spirit of, you go do it. Yeah, this, I mean, this, I actually got into this late because when the, when the group originally put it together, uh, it was already filled up, but one of the other couples dropped out. And so uh, we, we went in and took, in their, took their place. You were but, meant to be there. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that part of the story that's some some good luck i hope all is well with the other couple um but i'm, yeah, I'm they, happy for you that you could go yeah it, it, it wasn't anything wrong with them they just uh the lady wasn't comfortable with traveling it you know still with covid stuff yeah it's it's still kind of strange times did you feel pretty comfortable traveling yeah i mean while we were on a plane i wore an n95 mask but yeah other than that, that was about the only time I had a mask on. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were told that you needed to have a mask on the bus and on the and on other stuff in Italy, but I didn't see a whole lot. I mean, I had a mask with me if I needed it, but I didn't see a whole lot of people wearing them. And we yeah. did wear them and you know, when we were going through the Sistine Chapel and some of the other areas, we would put a mask on just but we were we were a minority of people that had masks on, but we still rather better safe than sorry yeah yeah especially when you're in those packed places so i'm i'm glad you stayed well and healthy uh someone's asking if this can be shared outside of kendall at home it will be we recorded this today and it will be posted um to our youtube channel and we'll that's always we're kind of sending out updates and showing people what's new and what's been posted i know a lot of people like to view these you know, maybe you're not available in the middle of the day on a weekday, uh, but they get they get watched in the evening and on the weekend. So it will definitely be up there, Dean. And we'll uh, I'll try to remind myself to send you a link to where it's located. Okay. I want to thank you so much. Do you have any other any other big biking trips coming up? Or are you going to stay stateside for it? Well, you've got skiing uh, trips probably coming up. The next one that I have planned, I don't know where it's going to be yet, will be Goba this year, which will be, again, starting Father's Day, but they don't announce the location till November. Oh, wow. Then you start to figure out where you're going to be riding. And, you know, okay. You figure out what the cities are, and then you go hunting for motels. Okay, so you'll have to keep us posted then where you're going to be next June. In between now and then, I know you'll be on the slopes a lot. Yeah, I've got, I've got four trips planned right now. I'm going to Vail in December, going to the Ogden area for Powder Mountain and Snow Basin in beginning of February, Lake Tahoe beginning of March, and Breckenridge, Colorado beginning of April. I love it. Well, stay well, Norm, and okay. keep moving because it's well, really good for you. <laughs> yeah. um, well, actually, on that, on that keep moving subject, when, when I turned 75, my sister gave me a a picture of the state of Ohio with with a picture of me and the Einstein saying, let's see what, what we got here. Einstein may have said it, but it took you to prove it. Uh, what life is like riding a bicycle in order to keep your balance, you must keep moving. I like that a lot. So that's a, a, a good note to end on. So thank you everyone for joining us. And again, we'll keep you uh, informed when this gets posted. And Norm, 
who knows, maybe in the spring we have you back to talk about your skiing adventures. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much. Stay well. Enjoy, uh, at least here in Cleveland, it is bright and sunny, so enjoy the day. Are you going to go riding today yet, Norm? I've got a ride at 5 o'clock tonight, and uh, arrivederci. Ah, oh, ciao, arrivederci. Thank you so much, Norm.